as we face record-breaking hurricane seasons and a general warming of winter seasons around the world, scientists say they'll continue looking at the causes and effects of climate change. And now artists are considering climate issues in their work as well. In January, more than 1,400 athletes participated in winter sporting events at the Lake Placid 2023 FISU World University Games in a region that's recently seen a shortening of its ski seasons. A related conference entitled Save Winter attracted many people concerned about our habitat and the future of winter games. The events also inspired a juried art show called Save Our Winter at the Lake Placid Center for the Arts. The exhibit combines art and science to take a new look at Old Man Winter. Visitors to the Lake Placid Center for the Arts Gallery, wandering among pretty pictures of snow, feel a sharp shiver when they turn the corner. No, they don't actually hear the pot break, but they see the results near the pedestal. And no, nobody accidentally broke the piece, as many fear. Artist Peter Shrope calls the work, Some Things Can't Be Undone. A juror for the exhibit, Jen Kretzer, says the broken pot may symbolize irreversible damage that's already happened with climate change. We know that the climate crisis is displacing millions of people, that there's people have lost their lives, that we've had a loss in biodiversity, that all these horrible things are happening. Kretzer is the director of climate initiatives at the Wild Center, a natural history museum in nearby Tupper Lake. She says she has to be able to see a positive side to the devastating work of art. I think it's also equally as important to think about what can we do to save what we have? What can we do, even if we put that pot back together again with some glue, <laughs> it'll never look the same. Those seams will be there, those cracks will be there. So we have both this, a piece that is inherently hard and challenging and, and it comes with like the despair and anxiety and heartbreak that climate, the climate crisis brings to so many millions of people. But I also feel like there's some hope in there as well that you can you know, hopefully bring it back together and, and maybe create something new, something different, something that can help us all build resilience both in ourselves and in our communities to help us thrive. As I walk around the art gallery here at the LPCA, I see that the purpose of this exhibit was really to celebrate the joy of winter sport and winter culture here in the Adirondacks. The beauty of the Adirondacks in winter, of walking through a forest or a community with the snow and the trees, um, it's, a, it's such a beautiful place. But also to remind us that this is fragile, that it's at risk and that we have so much to lose. Many artists, including Nip Rogers, focused on just that, what we have to lose if winter weather melts away. This painting is called Winter Memories. My uh, sister's grandson, there was a picture online of him catching s snowflakes with his tongue and it brought back memories of when I used to do that when I was a kid. So I painted a picture of this and I feel like it's important to remember the things that we love about winter and that we want to hand down to our, the next generation and the next generation and the next generation. There's a piece by Mary Woodcock Johnson uh, of children making snow angels. It's the same kind of a memory related thing to winter. a lot of childhood memories of, of winter. Uh, memories of just walking at night in the snow. That was the other painting that I did uh, in this show. 
I think those are memories that you miss. You know, if, if winter's not around, if we lose our winters, these kind of memories aren't gonna happen. We have these wide open spaces that we can enjoy here. Here's the magnificence of winter, snow covered mountains, a person having the opportunity to ski and experience that environment. And I'm afraid that's what we're gonna lose through climate change. Artist Sandra Hildreth says many beloved traditions face threats from warming temperatures. The painting that I did of the Ice Palace uh, is, first of all, is fabricated, but it's based on 20 years of living in Saranac Lake and, and seeing the Ice Palace being built every year. First glance, maybe people are going to think, oh, that's a beautiful sky. What's going on in this painting? Oh, it's an Ice Palace. But then why are there blocks of ice on the ground and why is there um, caution tape going around it? So I, I wanted to show what happens when it gets too warm and it melts and it kind of spoils the whole event. Hildreth says she remembers a year when the palace in Saranac Lake could no longer welcome visitors. They wrapped it in tarps as a way to try to protect it from the rain that was coming. And it did save it somewhat, but what happens is the slush gets washed out that's in between the blocks, and then the blocks get unstable and dangerous. So it, it does happen when it gets too warm. One of the things I did in my painting is I included uh, dates, which they, they do every year. They carve the date out of blocks of ice. But I tried to make it ambiguous and melting so you couldn't really tell how far in the future this was. A work by artist Janet Milstein also looks to a potential future in the Adirondacks, a wake-up call for people who don't wish to see palm trees up north and invasive birds. My piece is called Sharing Concern, and it's a mixed media pigment print. The nut hatches in the piece are generally birds we see more frequently in the winter, and it speaks to the idea that they need a cycle, a seasonal cycle, uh, to rest, to, to nest, to eat, and how a uh, warming climate sets their cycle off. They don't find the bugs that they need to survive for their hatchlings uh, at the right time. Uh, they can starve then during the winter because the things haven't been stored up, nuts haven't been stored up, or they don't have the plants that they need during that time to survive. One of the things I really like about the sharing concern piece is that it has this sort of centerpiece of the birds and the starling in particular, which is a non-native species, speaks to the idea that there are non-native or invasive species that are and may be moving into the Adirondacks, pushing out our native species. And that's at risk. We're, we're going to lose that biodiversity, the characteristics of what makes this place so special. Scientist McKaylee Glennon of Paul Smith's College aims to raise awareness about rising temperatures by combining art with scientific data. This is a dress that was created in Tunisian crochet, and it's a temperature record from NASA long-term climate data representing the degree to which our temperatures globally have deviated from normal conditions. So it's global temperature anomalies beginning in 1880 and going to 2019. And so the colors represent the degree to which we were on a planetary level cooler or warmer than long-term normal conditions. And so the brighter red colors are in the more recent years at the bottom here where you can see we are starting to get quite warm. I specifically made this in a dress format because I wanted to have something that I could wear to climate marches and I, I have done that with this dress. Glennon's work shows current climate trends and other pieces showcase science as a way to ease the warming of winter. I just feel like if solar was starting to come to the area and wind power, that it would help with the climate problem. Science can be seen as, you know, something that's not accessible to everybody, but art broadens the field. It, it, it brings more people into the conversation. It opens it up, it's more inclusive. It also can bring in a lot more diverse perspectives and ideas. Art is a good mechanism for communicating things about climate change because it's not scientific. 
It's visual, it shows rather than tells. Climate change alarms me because some part of me feels like I can't do anything about it as a citizen, as a single citizen. Something like a, a climate conference always makes me excited and then I hear news that makes me feel disappointed and nervous again. But I'm here, we're here, and so I'm personally going to do my best. And by doing the work that I do as art, I'm trying to express that concern always with a little bit of a hopefulness. Beauty in, in art expression can be really powerful and evocative and give us a sense of optimism and help us visualize things that we didn't know could happen, like visualize what hope might look like um, or what solutions might look like in the face of the climate crisis. I think it's a fantastic exhibit. I think it's a great way to get people engaged in a way that maybe doesn't feel argumentative or contentious, but just through these beautiful creations. This is all about saving winter, right? And, and, and thinking about what can we do? What, what actions can we take at an individual level, at a community level, at a state level, to create the change we want to see in the world and make sure that we're all a part of that change together for a healthy and sustainable future. You have until Saturday, February 25th to view the Save Our Winter exhibit at the Lake Placid Center for the Arts. The juried art show results from a collaboration among the LPCA, the Wild Center, Six Nations Iroquois Cultural Center, and the Adirondack Experience, the museum on Blue Mountain Lake. Head to mountainlake.org for more information, including hours of operation for the gallery at LPCA. Spotlight is supported by the Glenn and Carol Pearsall Adirondack Foundation, dedicated to improving the quality of life for year-round residents of the Adirondack Park.